Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. A few days ago, the Islamic State lost their fearless leader and founder, Khalif uh, Bakar al-Baghdadi, and he was killed by American special forces in a strike deep into Syria, carried out by our super elite uh, Delta Force commandos. Uh, President Trump made a uh, very uh, celebratory speech from the Situation Room and later from the White House. Everybody around the world seems to be happy al-Baghdadi is dead, but that is not the controversy. Joining us today is the Vice President for Research at the Center for Security Policy in Washington, D.C., Claire Lopez. She's a friend of ATP. We are thrilled to have her back today. Welcome, Claire. Hi, Barry. Thank you. Very glad to be back with you. So let's start out with who was al-Baghdadi and what does his death mean to the Islamic State? We need to know, is ISIS gone or something else, maybe? Well, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, uh, that is a nom de guerre. That's not his, his real given birth name. But Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi um, was an Iraqi, as his name suggests. Al-Baghdadi would suggest that he comes from Baghdad. And indeed, that is where he studied and obtained his bachelor's, master's, and PhD uh, in Islamic studies. Uh, he rose uh, through the ranks of uh, the uh, jihadist forces there in Iraq uh, in the 2000s, at the time when the United States and, and other coalition partners were battling uh, the, the extremely violent um, civil war and, and jihad uh, warfare against us um, all around uh, Iraq. Uh, well, what used to be called Iraq. I don't think it really exists anymore. Um, and um, he, as I said, rose up through the ranks of then Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda in Iraq, as we'll recall, um, was led in those years, up until 2006 anyway, uh, by Abu Musab al-Zarqawi. As we'll recall, he um, had been in Afghanistan uh, with uh, Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda uh, before uh, and up until or through 9-11, the attacks of September uh, 11, 2001, at which point uh, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi fled Afghanistan, apparently a prearranged escape route that took him uh, through Iran, Iran, which took care of him. He was injured, um, gave him medical care, and then he wound up eventually in the northern part of Iraq, north of Diyala province, in the area of Sulaymaniyya, in a place um, to the north of the capital of Baghdad. And it is in that milieu, if you will, during those years, and, and, and even after Abu Musab al-Zarqawi was taken out by U.S. forces in 2006, there uh, that um, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi uh, likewise rose up through the ranks. He had been arrested, as a matter of fact. He had been picked up and detained uh, by U.S. forces uh, in 2004, uh, sent to the... Um, the uh, camp called Camp Bucca, B-U-C-C-A, uh, which is where, um, because American forces knew nothing about Islam, Jihad, or Sharia, uh, they allowed all of these detainees to mix and mingle with one another, and that is where he gathered around him a following, and that became the core, eventually, of Al-Qaeda in Iraq, and then eventually across uh, the border porous as it may be with then Syria and on to the founding of ISIS, Islamic State in Iraq and Del Shams. So, uh, just briefly his background, where okay, he comes so from. We understand the history. What about the future? The leader is dead. Long live ISIS or well, something else? It's, it, it's not so much, I think, important uh, that we pay attention to the names. Of course, the Islamic State in Iraq and Al Sham, ISIS, or the Arabic, sometimes it'll be called Daesh, which is the acronym uh, of the exact same thing, but in Arabic, Dolat the Islamiyah Fi al Iraq wa al Sham, is no more, um, has not existed, in fact, since June 2014, 
um, when uh, the, uh, the forces under Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi split from Al-Qaeda Central, if you will, uh, in a power struggle, a, um, a, uh, a, a struggle over who was going to get to call the shots and be in charge, uh, split. And, and in June 2014, in that blitzkrieg advance across uh, the deserts uh, of western and northern western Iraq, um, the, uh, the forces of now the Islamic State conquered so much territory, and then, of course, uh, into the former Syria as well. But the important part about this name change is that it's no longer just confined to Islamic State in Iraq and al-Sham. Al-Sham means the Levant, basically. And, and to your question, basically, Barry, it's that uh, it, it is no longer just um, a jihad group of the Middle East but whether al-Baghdadi were still the leader or not, and a number of names have been suggested uh, as his uh, successors, the Islamic State has now spread all over the world, from the western part of North Africa, Libya, um, all the way east as far as the Philippines, and, and so many let me, places let, in let between. Me, let, me, Claire, let me press you on the answer. He's gone. He was the founder. He was the religious scholar in charge is the movement dead or does it continue it continues and the reason is that the movement is not identifiable or identical to uh, al-qaeda islamic state or any other islamic jihad group the movement as they themselves call it is the islamic movement and it is incumbent on every single muslim in the world who is faithful uh, to work in one way or another to establish a caliphate. Again, there's not been a, 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 a caliphate of, of duration uh, since the last one was abolished in the wake of World War I uh, by uh, the Turkish leader, uh, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, in 1924. So the attempt to reestablish that goes on. It is incumbent. It's, it's obligatory. Every single Muslim must work towards that by law, by Islamic law. Now, whether they do or not, that's a whole other question, but somebody will. So it's not ISIS, it's not the Islamic State that will go on. What will go on is the Islamic movement and its divine uh, obligation, as they see it, to reestablish a caliphate. Well, that's great history a perfect analysis and really bad news because uh, at least in American circles, the hope is and will continue to be the leader is dead and so goes the movement he founded. The idea that it will continue under some as yet unnamed successor is somewhat discouraging as I'm sure you can appreciate. We're gonna leave it there for now. Thank you for joining us on American Truth Project. And thanks to Claire Lopez. To our loyal viewers out there, you can take the word truth, type it into your cell phone. That's your message, and send it to 88202. That will subscribe you to our mailing list. You'll never miss a video like this or any of our daily information that we send out, and it's always free. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum.